Well, hey there, everybody. Welcome back. It is another week, another video, another... I'm holding my script. I, as I mentioned last week, I have a script. I work from a script. Physical script. Which indirectly brings me to my topic of the week. Physical media. I've touched on this before, um, kind of in my intro video and also in my... Uh, whatever I called it, the, the argument for physical things, basically. The argument, in the case for stuff, I think I called it. Now, I want to be very clear at the outset that I'm not against digital media stuff generally. I, I think there is a place for it. Um, kind of half and half. I just don't see the need to completely move over to it. I think there's still very definitely a case to be made for physical objects generally, <laughs> since we seem to be moving more and more away from them, um, but also for physical medias, such as CDs, books, and movies. Like, okay, I realize I'm an outlier in this sort of thing, and I, I really don't quite understand why. It it seems like a lot of people just uh, latch onto the new thing just because it's new and like, it, it, does it have a slick promotion that gets people or do they really believe this new thing is going to make their lives better, which every new thing claims that, right? But I mean, does it really? I'm looking at you, AI. Please don't look back. I mean, we all like the idea of an easy life, but is that even really attainable, or, I mean, is it even what we really want or need? Anyway, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not getting that deep. Um, so, as I said, I, I do believe there's a place for everything, because digital representations of physical medias can be just hand-dandy in certain situations. If you're packing to go on a long trip and you want your books, it's probably easier to bring a Kindle, load a few on there, than pack a bunch of hard covers. I'm sure it's easier, but you'll never, ever, ever convince me of it, hence my bulging backpacks. It's easier to fit a ton of music onto your phone or whatever uh, than an unwieldy CD rack. We used to have one of those column ones that spun, and uh, it got knocked over more than a few times. And DVDs, you can only have so many, right? Before you have to buy a new house, which is tempting. And not to mention, on the streaming services, there's so much selection. And you could get every movie or show or close to that you could possibly want. Right? Well, let's start with our points, and we'll see if that is the case. First off, physicality has a very definite point in its favor. You can experience your media with all your senses. Or close to. I mean, if, if you want to uh, go around licking your DVDs, I mean, it's, it's not up to me to say how you spend your Friday nights. But you can pick up a DVD or a CD. You can take it out of its case. You can read the liner notes. Do you remember liner notes? Even the early DVDs usually had, you know, fold-out paper covers with, like, diagrams and photos and maps and what have you, whatever related to the movie or TV show. There was an art to how those things were arranged, and sometimes there was actual art in there too. Plus, you could learn all the lyrics without looking them up online and finding the wrong lyrics. You can place it in the player, which is very satisfying when it just nestles in there just right since it's a little click. You can Put it on your shelf and gaze at it with pride. You can touch the pages of a book. And you can listen to the satisfying flip of each one. Plus which you can smell a book. Oh, how you can smell a book. If there's a particular smell to your computer or phone, then there's probably something wrong. Uh, but yes, there is that point to physical media is that you can experience it in other ways. You can put them on the shelf, you can admire them, you can say, that's mine. Which brings up my next point. I have 
a DVD collection. It is mine. These are the movies I saw fit to spend my money on. And that says something about me. By displaying these on my shelves, I'm making a statement to any visitors about who I am as a person. And I'm even making a statement to myself about who I am as a person. If I want to get rid of one of these physical things, it might be because maybe it's not working anymore, but also because it's not working anymore for myself personally. I don't feel the same way about it as I used to. I am not the same person I used to be. The things you have, your stuff, it's all an extension of your personality. And for me, music, movies, books, all that is part of that package deal. To de-physicalize everything, it kind of makes me less me. And without these things to remind me who I am, then who even am I? Okay, backing off once more from the precipice of unnecessarily deep thought. Freedom of choice seems like an odd argument, but let's break it down. Okay, I come from the era of video and CD stores, so there's probably some personal prejudice there and some nostalgia as well. And streaming is so convenient, right? You just bleep the boop, and for one low, low price that somehow keeps creeping higher, you get all the selection. In the old video store days, there was also plenty of choice. I mean, if you wanted to, you could spend hours scouring those shelves. And there were always those titles that you always walked past. And it didn't seem like anybody else ever rented them either. And had anybody ever rented them? Or would anybody ever rent them? And had they just, like, grown out of the shelves? So anyway, uh, I, I worked at a store 25 years ago? Holy cats. <laughs> um, and at that time, I want to say a new release was $3.99. And I also want to say that you got it for up to three nights. I could be wrong. Um, if you wanted it for longer or the title you wanted was gone, well, tough horse hockey to you. You just have to try again. If you rented one after much deliberation and it sucked, then you were out for a box, uh, which even today isn't chump change for something you're not going to keep. Now, on the one hand, this could maybe stifle people's inclination to branch out, uh, because why would you want to take the chance on something that's more of a chance? And besides which, it was usually easier to get a new release because they took up an entire section. I'm not kidding. They would take up an entire section, floor to ceiling, like this much shelf. It, that's a lot. If I don't know if I'm on camera, but a lot. Like, kind of like this behind me. It was a lot. But on the other hand, has anything really changed? Because even with all this choice at our fingertips instead of leaving the house, and for one low price, uh, as long as you stay on the same streaming service, and that service isn't prime, people still tend to opt for the big names, the known quantities. And part of that may be the power of advertising, sure, but part of it may also be the agony of choice except for a prime which tends to show me the same freaking titles over and over again some of us are total film nerds okay and i can spend a happy evening just like at the video store browsing the selection i can spend the whole evening browsing the selection and never making a choice but a lot of people don't want to do that they just want to pick something and get on with their lives which also there's good argument to be had in favor of that but here's where the difference really comes in when you buy something to own it, there's more weight to that decision, right? You tend to buy movies after renting them or seeing them in the theater multiple times, and you like it so much you want to watch it over and over again, but you also want to spend the money on that thing. So you're saying you have deemed this property worth owning. That gives it extra weight. Many of us can't afford to spend money like water, and even if you could, would you really want to? Because you don't need all that much. Too much stuff is also too much to keep track of. 
Hence the paralysis of some people when confronted with too much choice in the streaming or ye olde video rental. But in an actual store, store um, of any kind, buying anything, your choice is more limited. Because not only by selection, but also by price. And true, this can happen with streaming, too, because you're probably not going to get all the streaming services. You may as well just get cable, right? For example, I don't have Apple+. Plus. I think some of the shows look interesting, but just there's been nothing that makes me want to show out for another streaming service. It's just too much, even for me. Now, if I limit my choice to purely what's on my DVD shelves, which is an extreme example because I have a lot of DVDs, but even so... It makes the choice easier. Next point, a very basic, simple one. Even in this day and age, not everyone can afford or get streaming. Some people don't even have the option of getting fast enough internet to support streaming. What are they supposed to do? Some people can't even afford the extra 10 bucks for a streaming service or they can't afford the fast internet, even though it is an option. What these people can do is they can get CDs or DVDs at the library, provided they have a library to take advantage of. What should they do if that option, maybe not the library per se, but the things in it, the physical media, what are they supposed to do if that option is completely taken away? Are we just supposed to say, well, tough cookies, then you should move and get a better job, and good luck with that. It's not logical, and it's not fair. Not to mention loss of internet, sudden internet outages that can happen to any of us. Well, if the internet goes out, I've got entertainment options. Lots of them. Next point. Many of us have heard the term curating a collection, which sounds rat fancy. But for our purposes here, it simply means having control over the collection of things you decide to own. I'm mostly concentrating on movies and TV, but it also goes for books and music. It even goes for streaming services because it's up to you what you decide to spend the money on because there's only so much you can afford. But the thing about streaming services is they are the ones who curate their own collections, not you. They decide what goes in their library or what they decide to take out. There was a big thing not so very long ago with HBO or Max or what have you, where they completely removed a property. They didn't just completely remove it, they deleted it. They got rid of it. There are no DVDs. There's no physical media. There's no record of this thing ever having existed except for the creators telling us so and the memories of the people who happened to see it. So there is little to no record of that property ever having existed. Think on that a moment. No matter what you may or may not like, without a physical copy, its very existence is out of your hands. So with a physical copy, you, ha you have a chance of holding on to it at least a little while longer. It's true that nothing lasts, but you have more of a degree of control over it. You can extend its lifespan. Not to mention all those streaming services that load up on a ton of new shows all at once, which is not a cost-effective plan, and that's why we have so many commercials, even though we were supposed to avoid that with streaming. Anyway, so streaming services can decide to cancel things after one or two seasons, just as you're getting into the show. They can even cancel them on cliffhanger or force the creators to wrap things up in just a couple episodes in a completely unsatisfactory way. And that is super frustrating. Then there are the properties you can't manage to find anywhere, and that still happens, especially if you're trying to find something off the beaten path. I know I have a heck of a time with that personally because I've started collecting Japanese movies. I remember just a year or so ago, I was so young and innocent, I thought in this day and age, of the internet, I can find anything I'm looking for. I was so very, very wrong. Even DVDs are tricky to find, but I have a better chance of finding them on DVD. Making sure those titles are not bootlegs is another whole problem, but if those titles were available on streaming, I wouldn't have that issue. I mean, I still might search for them on DVD because I like to own things, 
but at least I could watch them. Okay, my last point. And this is one that many people may not consider or care to consider because it comes under the heading for many people of it doesn't affect me directly. Streaming is not usually real great for artists. The media businesses have always been just that, a business. They pay the artists less than they should, sometimes just enough to get by. And they quash the stuff that's more imaginative, that's different, because they're not sure if they can sell it. They are not in business for art. They are in business to make money. But now that we have streaming, it's arguably worse. Musicians have never made a ton from CD sales, but now they barely make enough to get by. You have to be a huge artist in order to make anything. Music artists can still make money from touring, but again, it helps to be a huge artist. Small artists may actually lose money. Not to mention there was this little thing called the pandemic when people couldn't tour at all. Something like that could happen again. As I said, I it's not that I don't personally like streaming. I do. I have several services myself. I like having more choice. I like having the option. But I don't like giving up so much control over my collection. I have that feeling with digital stuff. It's not here. It's not in my hands. Therefore, anything could happen to it. It could go anywhere at any time, and I wouldn't be able to do anything about it. I would have no control. It could just fly off into the ether somewhere. And it seems like things in general are getting that way more and more. We give up our physical media. We don't buy the newspaper. We don't write checks. We don't write letters. We don't go into actual stores to buy things. We can't even wait a couple of weeks for a package. The glory of anticipation. That there are good things about all this. I wrote half the script on a notebook. <laughs> me being me. But then I finished it on a computer because it was easier on the hands and I could organize it more easily. I did this while listening to music through a streaming service, which happened to be Bandcamp. It's more for indie artists and you can pay them what you feel their music is worth. It's highly recommended. And I will upload this video to a mega corporate platform. I use the internet to find my DVDs. I'm not against all this. I just feel there should be limits. There should be limits to pretty much anything. I know people who use the Alexa. They don't use cash anymore. They've jumped on the AI bandwagon. Online is their friend, and I'm sure they have excellent reasons for doing so. I just feel that too much of anything is too much. Online things are tools, just like anything else. And when you're looking to do a job, you look for the best tool for that job. Virtual things may not always be the best tools. They just have better PR. Physical things may not always be the best things either. Hey, if you're doing all this stuff virtually, then it's less paper. And that's more environmentally friendly. Although I believe there are ways to use paper in an environmentally friendly fashion. But still, it's a fair point. Coexistence. That's all I'm looking for here. Virtual things have their points, but let's not shut out physical things completely. The main point is that I see what I perceive as people just completely jumping on the virtual bandwagon and shutting out the physical. The world changes. Things move on. I get that. But we don't have to let go of things just because we perceive them and sometimes suddenly perceive them as outdated. Just because something's new and shiny doesn't automatically make it better. Even if it's new and improved, it may not be improved for our personal needs. And the way things are headed, it seems to be more and more this repudiation of physical objects. And if we get to the point where we lose all our physical objects, what have we really lost? I would argue that we've lost a part of ourselves. And if I'm getting that, serious and philosophical. You can tell this is something I feel very deeply about. In any case, <laughs> this is a long ramble and I appreciate your sticking with me. If you did, I hope you can hear me because a uh, few people have said that uh, better mic would be better and I'm just wondering if it's the mic or if it's me because I tend to be a quiet talker. I'm trying not to. Um, anyway, I do, do hope you could hear this video 
and that you enjoyed this video and that you now go and do something physical, you know, like uh, put on physical media, read the paper, okay, read a book, a magazine, the back of a cereal box, <laughs> whatever floats your boat. You can even get out and take a walk. Oh, that's a crazy idea. Maybe I'll do that. It's just crazy enough to work. I'll see you next week. Bye.